All right, so next up, we have a very, very, very special presentation for you all. This person is one of the original sharks on Shark Tank. His name is Mr. Kevin Harrington. But first, before we bring him on, I want to show you a quick video. Meet Kevin Harrington. With 500 products launched and generating over $4 billion in product sales worldwide, Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, original shark on Shark Tank, and as seen on TV, pioneer. Kevin is the ambassador and principal architect of the global direct response industry and co-founder of the Electronic Retailing Association. Kevin creates massive brands by combining great products with superstar talent like Kim Kardashian, 50 Cent, Kathy and Paris Hilton, Chris and Bruce Jenner, CeeLo Green, George Foreman, Billy Mays, Anthony Sullivan, Jack LaLanne, Montel Williams, Hulk Hogan, and Tony Little. My brand now is worth over $3 billion. Uh, so my advice to everybody, if you even have an idea, you'd want to go to Kevin Harrington. Based upon his massive success in pioneering the infomercial industry, Kevin was selected for the ABC hit TV show Shark Tank, where he appeared in over 150 segments, also currently running on CNBC. Kevin has appeared in numerous television segments. CNN, Fox Business, Bloomberg, Jim Cramer's The Street, MTV, Good Morning America, CBS Morning News, CNBC Squawk Box, Entrepreneur, Fox and Friends, Bethany, and The View. Kevin Harrington. Yay! Hey, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Kevin was awarded the ERA's Lifetime Achievement Award for his monumental impact on the industry. Kevin is the author of Act Now, How I Turn Ideas into Million Dollar Products. Kevin is inventor of the infomercial, original shark on Shark Tank, as seen on TV pioneer, and the billion dollar man, Kevin Harrington. Everyone stand up, stand up, give a huge welcome to Kevin Harrington. How you doing, Jason? Doing great. Right. Thanks, Matt. Right, man. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, all right. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take a seat. All right. Well, you've been in Vegas a couple days. I did find one machine that pays out every time. It's the ATM. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, right? So it's such a pleasure to be here, and I'm so excited to be involved today is my first day of making the announcement. I'm involved now with Amazing.com, and I want to thank uh, Matt and Jason for being part of my life now. Thank you guys very much. Let's give them a round of applause. Um, so when I, when, when I first heard about Amazing, it reminded me of, I had a company called Quantum back in the early 80s, and I'm going to talk about Quantum, which means fast growth. And that's what Quantum Entrepreneurship means, is fast growth. How many entrepreneurs do we have in the room? Okay, everybody, right? Yes. So we're going to talk about fast growth. And speaking of fast growth, Amazing.com in just a couple of years has now built to about 300,000 members. And that is amazing for sure. So yeah, let's give a round of applause for that one too. You guys, it's, that's why I want to be here. I like connecting because on Shark Tank, I only got to take we would shoot eight pitches in a day. And, you know, speaking of Shark Tank, let me just, I got to throw the picture of my buddy. How many know Mr. O'Leary, Kevin O'Leary, right? Well, you, you know why he calls himself Mr. Wonderful? Because nobody else will, okay? <laughs> yeah, he loves to call himself that. No, he, he actually is a pretty cool guy. And um, I see him, I go on CNBC a lot, and he's on CNBC. Uh, all the time commenting on deals, and it's, it's really been a lot of fun being part of the Shark Tank umbrella, but I have to go back and talk about, and today I'm going to share with you some of the, the um, some clips of, from Shark Tank, some of the successes, some of the failures that I've had, because being an entrepreneur is not just about being successful, it's being able to fail, get up, dust yourself off, and go back at it again, right? So, yes, thank you, thank you. And I've done that quite a few times. So, in fact, I will say this. There is one thing that I am so uh, just unbelievably in favor of, and that is using mentors in your life. I have, I have used mentors for over 40 years. I started, fortunately, with my father as my mentor, my father was an entrepreneur. He had restaurants, and I started when I was 11 years old. In fact, 
just to, to give you a little, I'll show you some of the books that my father would use when I was a child. Um, he had, this was The Cat in the Hat, creates a product line of other hats for other cats, okay? <laughs> uh, and, and how about the Harry Potter, the, the, the mystical mystery of intellectual property, right? So, I mean, you know, I think that I was lucky because I had a different education, uh, the, how the Grinch stole your new product idea, right? I mean, I was getting these in the third and fourth grade. Uh, I tease when I talk about this, but my father really was my mentor. And God bless, he, he, he passed last summer at 93 years old, and literally until the week that he passed away. He would give me ideas, he would watch some of my commercials and tell me that, you know, you missed this, uh, uh, opening point, and you didn't have a strong enough close or call to action. And I mean, it was just amazing to have somebody like that in my life. And I think this is one of the reasons why I want to be part of Amazing to share some of my experience experiences over the years, because I've been doing, I, I'm an entrepreneur now for over 40 years and have made tons and tons of, of good deals, and then a few that didn't work. Um, so even some on Shark Tank that, uh, that became $10 million and others that I lost, you know, a half a million dollars. So uh, it, it all started for me, and this was 1985 when I got lucky. I had this business called the Small Business Center. It was a one-stop center for small businesses. I was 28 years old, and I, was the, I put the little guy in business. And so it, I've sold the businesses. I had a business brokerage company, and I rented a whole floor of an office building in Cincinnati, Ohio. And so in the center was the business brokerage, and we had 200 different companies for sale, pizza parlors, restaurants, car washes, flower shops, etc. So we had a chance to see the books and records. Think about that. This is you know, back, I don't know, what, 30-some years ago now, um, I was looking at books and records of hundreds of companies for sale, and then when someone would buy the business, I would be sitting there at the closing table, and I'd say, who's going to do your insurance? How about your advertising, your brochures? If it's a restaurant, you want, you're doing new menus. Um, who's going to do the printing, the this, the that? So I was referring these people out for all these different services, and that's when I said, you know what? What if I bring it all in-house? And we did. We had an advertising agency, and I rented space to these different services, and I got a percentage then of any of the business that we did. So we did graphics, we did advertising, we did accounting, we did insurance, we did the legal for these companies. And this was what got me the little breakthrough, cover story, 1985, Entrepreneur Magazine changed my life. And so that is part of the process of building your business, it, it wasn't just a, a lucky thing that I actually got on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine in 1985. I planned it and I orchestrated it. And I'm gonna talk about that as one of my seven steps here today. So I'm gonna share as much as I can. I don't, I'm not doing uh, an all dayer, but I got, a, I got a, a, a quick seven steps and this is gonna be kind of fun here, hopefully. So one thing that I like to talk about uh, is how I got started. And so here I was, this small business center guy doing, selling the different uh, kinds of businesses. So I would go to all these different trade shows. And I was at the Philadelphia Home Show because when, think about this. If, if, if I'm selling flower shops, I got to know the flower industry. If, if, if I'm selling a, a, you know, like a home improvement uh, business, I got to know houseware. So, so I would do a lot of trade shows, and even to this day, I still do a bunch. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But um, so I, I was at the Philadelphia Home Show, and there's a guy that is is cutting through a Coca-Cola can, and. As he cuts through the can, he says, I'm trying to damage this knife. It's still sharp. I can, I can cut a tomato. Then he goes through a hammerhead. Then he cuts a pair of sneakers. And this guy was amazing. His name was Arnold Morris. And so I met Arnold. And right around the same time, uh, there was something very interesting happening for me. So I, I, I was sitting watching TV. And the, on TV, literally right at this time that I met Arnold, this was 1984, Discovery Channel, I turned my TV on, and all of a sudden, at a, at a point, it went dark, and then bars came up on the screen. And I found out that six hours a day, this is 1984, six hours a day, that Discovery Channel was dark, bars. And I'm like, what the, what's going on? I'm, I'm paying for 30 channels, but, I'm, but Discovery is only, a six, is only an 18-hour-a-day network. Well, that's when the light bulb went off for me, because I said, 
I, I, here I was, I mentioned, you know, with Arnold Morris, and I, at the home show, this guy, as he was pitching what was called the Ginsu knife, he was amazing. People were, were flocking around Arnold when he was done presenting the knife, and if there was 12 people there, eight of them would buy the Ginsu knife set. And he did the pitch over and over, and I watched him for about an hour, and then I said, Arnold, what if we took a camera, turned on the camera, put it up on the Discovery Channel, and see if people want to buy this knife set. And that's when Arnold said, what is, what is this even called? We didn't call it infomercials, but that's what we did. And here's a clip from the original show. Now, you take a tomato, the weight of the knife alone cuts that tomato. Let me ask you something. How many knives do you have at home this sharp? You could drop the tomato on top. Pretty sharp, right? You know what one young lady said? <laughs> Can you cut them thin? I said, thin, one tomato will last you all week long. So Arnold, th this was so powerful. By the way, think about these numbers now. For $1,000, we turned that camera on and we put it up on the channel and we paid them a percentage of sales. And that went on to do over $500 million in sales. So let's, let's give Arnold Morris a round of applause. Uh, the, um, let's see, there we go. This became so unbelievable. Now, Arnold Morris, so then Arnold says to me, Kevin, he said, when you were at the Philadelphia Home Show, there was a bunch of other people that you maybe didn't remember seeing, but um, what if I introduce you to a few of these people? Would you give me a percentage? And I said, hey, th this is sort of the beginning of like affiliate type relationships, right? So I said to Arnold, absolutely. And so he introduced me to his buddy, Billy Mays. And, I, and, and I don't, how many have ever heard of Billy Mays? We're gonna talk about Billy, right? Okay. And, and so we were doing literally hundreds of millions of dollars back in these days with, with Billy Mays and Arnold Morris and Sandy Mason and Wally Nash and just people that had, they, they had their pitch. So, so th this was the quantum entrepreneurship that happened for me. And so as I look, I said, if, if I can, there, if there's bars on a screen in the US, there's probably bars on a screen all around the world. And last night at dinner with Matt and a, and a bunch of some of the key folks last night, some couple of VIPs, I had a really cool discussion with a few people where I talked about how I actually have taken my products. We take, we take Arnold Morris and we take Tony Little, and we dub them into Spanish, German, Dutch, Italian, French, uh, you name it, we're in 20 languages all around the world. And, and taking a product into the global marketplace. So, so this was the beginning of my quantum entrepreneurship. And I got the phone call, and this was the, you know, Mark Burnett, he said, Kevin, and this is literally, this is 2008. He said, Kevin, I'm, I'm putting a new show together, and I want you to come out and meet with me, and this show is called Shark Tank. Can you fly to Los Angeles? Now, I live in St. Pete, Florida, and so I said to Mark, I said, wait a minute, Mark. I said, I know what you do to those people on the island on Survivor. I'm not going to do anything on a Shark Tank, okay? <laughs> no, you're going to throw me into, I thought it was going to be some kind of fishing show or something, right? I'm like, no. He says, no, it's a business show, Kevin. I'm like, I'm like okay, well, that, let me hear about that. He says, well, you're going to be, there's going to be five sharks at the front of the room. You're going to get pitched, and you get three minutes to decide whether or not you want to do that deal. And I said, wow, that... I do that every day. And so I said, I think I would like that. So I said to Mark, I said, why did you call me? And why, here's the, the other sharks, that, that, that why did you call Barbara? And why did you call uh, Damon? He said, he says, you guys are entrepreneurs that have grown very fast and furious. And I said, you, are you talking about in a quantum type fashion? And, and, and so that's what made me think that yes, I have to take what I've done because Mark Burnett said, Kevin, this, this, this quantum growth is something that very few people are able to handle. And even at dinner last night, we were talking, he said, what are some of the missing links and what do you need to be able to do that? That's gonna be what I'm sharing today. And so if you look at all the other sharks, there's been about, uh, there's uh, the Paul, John Paul DeGiorio's a shark and, um, 
the, um, there was just recently the guy from GoPro, Nick Woodman, is a shark, and Ashton Kutcher came on this year as a, as a shark. So it's been kind of a cool thing to be in the, in the club with all these guys, but what it's all about is, what I say, is getting to the top 5% of income in your industry. Now, how many would like to be in that top 5%, right? That's what it's all about. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So, so these seven steps are, are, are pretty simple. We're gonna go through them quickly. And, and it's, 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 what, it's really what I've used for 40 years to build each and every business that I built. And the first step, I kinda talked about it, is it's important, this is for people that have not yet identified exactly what they want to do or exactly what their product is. I call you have to develop curiosity overload. Put your mind, exercise the curiosity muscles. All right? And so how do you do this? Well, I mentioned trade shows. I, got, I go to this day, I'm in Vegas more than 20 times a year. I, I go to, what do I do? I go to the, the best trade shows in the world. I come here for the CES show, the hardware show, the automotive show. I come here for the Super Zoo. I was just here filming at that show just recently. So what, what am I looking for? I'm looking for products. I'm looking for people, relationships, deals, right? And so it, it, I've been doing that since the early days when I said the Philadelphia Home Show. And it's, people say, oh, but you're so lucky that you, these products come to you. It's not luck, it's, it's, it's a system that you have to follow. And nowadays, it goes beyond just going to trade shows. It goes, and by the way, when I go to trade shows, there's a media room at most of the larger trade shows. You go to the media room and you get a, you get a hook up with the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, the, all the local trades that are covering that industry. If it's housewares, you got Homeworld Magazine there and you start introducing yourself. And so when I'm coming out with a new product, I know who at the Wall Street Journal covers housewares and who at USA Today covers, if it's consumer electronics, Boom, I've got the, the Rolodex of all of this. So nowadays, it's not just trade shows. I follow the HSNs, the QVCs, the Alibabas, the Groupons, and look at this right here, the directory of mail order catalogs. Again, what are we talking about? Curiosity overload. There's a, this catalog is this thick. Now this is a little old school, but I, I did this about 20 years ago. I, there's 1,500 catalog companies listed in that directory. I mailed to every single one of them and said, please send me your catalog. I'm an avid catalog buyer. And I, get, I got a stack of catalogs from that point forward to this day, I still get more than 1,000 catalogs delivered to my house. And so, and, and I broke them into sections, housewares, hardware, fishing, golf, hair and beauty, etc. So now, any industry that I want to see what's going on, let's, let's talk about hardware. I take the 75 hardware catalogs and I can go through and I can see, I'll tell you what I look for. First thing I look for is I want to see a product that's in more than just one of those catalogs. Why? Because it gets into one, it has success, then it goes into another, they use the success to get to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth. Now you're starting to see the trends, the hot products, what's moving, what's selling. You see a product that started on page 32, it moves to page eight, moves to the front cover or inside the front cover, that's a hot product. I call them up and I say, hey, you're having great success in catalogs, how about QVC or HSN? Have you ever thought about infomercials or electronic retailing or global distribution? And I partner with product owners every single day by following the trends and what's happening. And by the way, when, you, when you're looking in these catalogs like this, you're getting the price points, the color combinations, what the retail packaging looks like, and what's new and great in that particular industry. So I'm gonna give you a couple quick examples of people that I met through curiosity overload because I was doing the trade shows and following the products and I ran into this guy, Tony Little, who, by the way, he doesn't fit in that Speedo anymore, okay? <laughs> I mean, Tony, he's a good friend of mine. He's, he's actually, uh, we're one month apart in age, so he's in, a, he's in amazing shape, but, um, you know, he, he's, he's about 30 pounds heavier today than he was back then. But Tony's a bodybuilder, right? And Tony had a, a technique that he called target training. And so I said, Tony, how does that work? He said, well, 
I'm a personal trainer, I'm a bodybuilder, and I teach other bodybuilders how to get targeted parts of their body firmer or get rid of flab. He said, I can get, if the, or if they, if they have one muscle here, they want a second one there. I can target that body part with an exercise on how to get that. I can get rid of the love handles. I can tighten up the glutes. And I said, so how do you make money? He said, I make money by the hour. I go to Gold's Gym at five in the morning and I start with so-and-so and then I go to someone's house and I, 75 bucks a session. And that's when I said, Tony, I said, no, this is what you gotta do. You're gonna come in my studio, we're gonna shoot six one-hour DVDs and we're gonna call it target training, but it's not gonna be just for bodybuilders, it's for the mass market. And that's what we did. And this was Tony Little's first infomercial, the target training DVD set. 1990, when this launched, did over 300 million in sales. Let's give Tony Little a round of applause on that one, okay? Yes. So, like, from zero to 300 million. Then Tony said, well, I got this ab isolator, and I also, I'm gonna show you a little bit more some of the other things we did with Tony later, but this was an amazing transformation for Tony, and so I said to myself, wow, what, I gotta go to, to, to more trade shows because I, I get a knock on my, on my back. Hey, are you that guy that's doing those infomercials? And I met Jack LaLanne, and I said, Jack, how do you stay, he was in his 70s when I met him, and this was back in the early 90s. I said, how do you stay in such amazing shape? And he said, well, I work out every day. I said, that's too easy, we gotta, let's zero in. And, then, and I'm talking about, and I, I, I forgot to mention that point, unpacking your valuable IP, your intellectual property. That's the point we did with Tony, taking target training, unpacking that and taking it to the masses, right? So with Jack LaLanne, it was the same thing, Jack, what else do you do? He says, Kevin, I have fresh carrot juice every morning. And that was when the light bulb went off. I said, this is what we're gonna do, Jack. We're gonna monetize and productize you. We're gonna put you on TV, and what are we gonna sell? The Jack LaLanne juicer. And that's what we did. So the Jack LaLanne juicer uh, was unpacking something that he did every single day was just drinking fresh carrot juice. And there's one more example, and maybe, maybe I'll give uh, two more, but um, everybody remembers uh, our buddy George Foreman, right? He loves cheeseburgers, and all he, he did something very simple. He, he, he took a slanted grill because he wanted to have less fat and grease on his cheeseburgers, but he wanted to eat cheeseburgers every day. And he called it the lean, mean grilling machine, right? I mean, how many own a George Foreman grill or have seen that one, right? Okay, so, um, so th this, th these are simple things, productizing, but this was part of my curiosity overload outreach. And uh, I, went, I was at a, at a golf show, and Davis Love is sitting there. He's got a golf club that he's swinging, and I, I don't have to show you all these products, but it was called the Medicus Golf Club with a hinge. And he said, this is, this is a product that I'm launching, and we launched the Medicus Golf Club in 1991. So it, it was all about finding something, and by the way, I mean, it doesn't have to be something revolutionary. How about a blanket with arms, okay? <laughs> the Snuggie. I mean, the, did you know this? It sold over 24 million pieces, the Snuggie. Let's give a round of applause to the Snuggie, okay? <laughs> I mean, like, unbelievable. And by the way, we, this product was manufactured for about $2.75, sold for $19.95. The profit margins, the, it was just an unbelievable success. So um, it, th this is step number one, exercising that curiosity overload, putting yourself, you've got to get into opportunities. And by the way, everybody is here because you're exercising your curiosity overload. You want to know who are the speakers? What kind of information can I learn? Who can I be networking with here? That's what I'm here for. I'm looking for deals. I'm looking for products. And so it's just, this is a curiosity overload moment for me as it is for everybody here today too. So thank you guys for, for, for being here because without you, yeah, absolutely, thank you. With, without you, none of this happens. So step number two uh, is Create a powerful blueprint for fast business growth. Now, 
I could spend a long time talking about all the things that we do, creating an executive summary, a competitive analysis, a marketing and sales plan, talk about management team and all of that, but today's not the day for me to do that, but I just want to stress that, that so many people, I, I, right now I have a friend of mine that's launching a business, and he's, he's already invested $300,000 into this company that he's launching, and, I, and he called me for help. And I said, his name is Sam, I said, hey Sam, um, can you send me, you, you want me to help, I'm, I'm, I'll help you, I'll mentor you, uh, you're my buddy, can you send me your business plan? And he said, oh, I don't have one. And I was like, well, you know, you've invested $300,000 and what, you know, what's your exit strategy and what's the competitive analysis and what, you know, I want to see an executive summary because what Sam was looking for was for me to help him raise some capital. And I said, Sam, we've got to start, we've got to jump back and we've got to do some basic things. And it's, it's called putting this powerful blueprint together. So the, I don't care how small your, your business is, you need to document it, put it down, and, and, and have all this available so that you can, can go, as you build your business, you're, you're, you're tracking it to metrics that you've established on the front end. And, 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 and this is important. For example, in my world, there's two very important things that I track. One is, what is the cost to get, and let's, let's just go back to the television world, what's the cost to get the phone call? right? And, and then ultimately from the cost of the call to the cost then of the order. And then the other side of it is what's the average order revenue stream or a average order value that I get from that customer. So I'm pushing down my cost per call and I'm pushing up my average revenue uh, stream per customer. And as those two are, are moving in the right direction, this, this is where we go from losing money to breaking even to making money. And it all starts with this blueprint. So um, again, I could do a whole day on this, but we're just gonna just mention these are the things that you need. Number three is raising capital. And I, I can't say enough about this step that it, you don't necessarily have to have it before you do some testing. I know a lot of people like to get something tested, and now they've got something that they think works and can roll out. But um, the, at dinner last night, somebody asked me, hey, you've built companies that have grown to, you know, I've had more than, more than um, a dozen companies that grew to over 100 million. I've, and, I, and I had the, 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 my original quantum company grew to 500 million in annual sales. How do you break through the, 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 the point, the ceiling of a $10 million business to go to 20, to go to 50, to go to 100, to go to 300? I mean, with the $500 million a year company, I started from zero, we did 55 million, we did 85 million, we did 150 million, we did 300 million, and then we did 500 million over about a four to five year period. So how does that happen? How do you break through? Because other competitors of mine got stuck at 25 or 50 million. Well, it's raising capital. This is the key. And raising capital is so important because it, if you're gonna grow, you, you need cash to grow. In my business, I needed inventory. I needed to bring the goods in. I couldn't sell the goods if I didn't have the, the product inside the country. And we were buying everything from China. So I needed lines of credit. I needed millions of dollars. And I had to go out and raise that money. And so this is where the rubber meets the road. And, I, and, and I've, I've raised over $150 million over the last 40 years. And, it, and it's simple if you follow some steps. There's different ways to raise capital. Um, you, you can bootstrap it. There's friends, there's relatives, there's angels, there's venture capitalists, there's investment bankers, industry suppliers. And by the way, think about that one. I needed, this is about 15 years ago, I needed a couple million dollars for a project that we had tested. It was working, I needed cash because I needed to buy inventory and I needed to buy media. So what did I do? I went to my industry, the suppliers, I went to my media company, I went to my phone service, I went to my manufacturer and I said, I, I, I need some advances of capital, I'm gonna give you an exclusive 
contract to buy all the media from you. I'm going to give you an exclusive contract to take my phone calls. I'm going to give you an exclusive contract to manufacture my goods for a half a million, for a half a million, for a half a million up front. And then you're going to get all the volume that comes from this. So just like that, within a matter of 60 days, we pulled $2 million together just from industry suppliers. So there's a technique on how to do that and a system, and it, it works. So um, there's crowdfunding ways to do things nowadays. Just about two weeks ago, Title III, you can now raise up to a million dollars coming up. The SEC has passed. I don't know if, if there's many of you. How many of you are following crowdfunding? Some of you are doing that, right? Okay. So I call crowdfunding sort of the modern day infomercial business, right? I mean, Kickstarter has done over a billion dollars. Now, and that's non-equity. But now, Title III crowdfunding is going to allow an entrepreneur to raise money like a Kickstarter, but give equity. And that's the downside. I mean, on Kickstarter, people put money up, but they don't, all they get is the, an advanced purchase of the product. They don't get equity. But now, people for $250, $500, $1,000, they're going to get equity in a company. So you could sell off 5% of your company, 10% of your company, 2% of your company, raise a million dollars in cash, and it's, and it's all by following a system. So, by the way, it starts by producing a good quality video. And that's why I say it's the modern day infomercial business. There's very few crowdfunding successes. I don't know of one that's ever done well without a powerful video, which is like a mini infomercial. So that's why I love this space and I'm getting a major league involved in crowdfunding. So um, the, the, the important part of this is understanding also what I call the investor sweet spots. So uh, this, I'll give you a case study of, of a, a, I raised $22 million for one company from 191 individual investors. And, it, it, and, and it, this took about three weeks. I met with over 90 of these investors face to face over this three week period of time out of a New York base. I have an office on Times Square in New York, and we went to their homes, we went to their businesses. We, you know, they came to see me, they came to my office, and we had meeting after meeting after meeting. And the most important thing that I did was I understood all the different sweet spots of every one of those investors. Because some investors, and, and, and by the way, you, you don't know until you sit down with each individual and start the process. So this is part of what I sh show entrepreneurs how to do. How do you get from the investor what his sweet spot is? Well, if you're sitting at his kitchen table, you just sit and talk and have a little coffee and you start, start talking about what are some of the great investments that you made and what, that you, what did you like about those and this and that. Oh, I had to see a tremendously healthy profit on, on, on the company. Or, and so, so some people want to see big profits, right? That's healthy profit margins. Others say, oh, I look for something that's going to get acquired real soon if, it's, if the industry's ripe for acquisition. Others are looking for new technology or IP. Others want strong and experienced management team, they won't invest in just the entrepreneur. And this is where I say, I, I used to, how many have heard the term bet on the jockey? Anyone's heard that before? Investors say, I bet on the jockey. Guess what? No, I don't bet on the jockey. Because it, it, just think about a, a, a horse race. The jockey rides the horse, but what if the horse shows up in terrible health and, can, and, it, and hasn't been trained properly, didn't get a good night's sleep because they had a bad stall it was sleeping in? You, it's the whole system and the whole business around the, the, the jockey. So an entrepreneur, the, the, some of the worst deals that I've done was when I just bet on the entrepreneur, trusted the entrepreneur to take the money and run with it. They needed a strong, experienced team around them. And just to finish up on sweet spots, so you, you think, well, doesn't every investor want to see healthy profit margins? No. Facebook didn't have any profit margins. They were losing a ton of money. The, 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 what those investors in Silicon Valley wanted to see was tremendously fast and geometric growth. They wanted to see all the money that came in reinvested back to get more customer acquisition. They didn't care about profits. In fact, if, if, if Mark Zuckerberg had walked into a bunch of guys in Silicon Valley and said, 
I've, here's my model. I'm going to be very profitable in year one. These investors would have walked because they don't want profits. They want to see fast growth because that's where it is, is getting the customer acquisition. So that's, th this is why understanding the sweet spot of the investor is the key to unlocking getting the check. And if, if you watch Shark Tank, a, a lot of people will say, O'Leary oh, loves to see like a royalty type deal, right? So that's understanding what his sweet spot is. And if you can play to that, present to that, you've got a much better chance of getting the investment. Now, one thing I gotta show you, because I, I, I love talking about some successes. I told you I'm gonna show you some that may or may not have been successful. So watch this product. And it's time for me to talk about one. Well, you tell me if you think it was successful or not, but let's watch this. Now you can put on your favorite music and have fun dancing all those extra inches and pounds away. Presenting the one-of-a-kind, low-impact, calorie-burning, muscle-toning, total body exercise that's fun, fast, and easy. The revolutionary new twist sizer from the man who got the whole world twisting, Chubby Checker. A fitness product with a man named Chubby, okay? <laughs> no, it didn't work, right? So I lost a half a million dollars on this project, right? So uh, uh, let's not give a round of applause to Chubby Checker, okay? <laughs> All right. I mean, no, I, I, I joke about Chubby, but, th you know, th this is where I have to talk about test before you invest. And so... Uh, this is a, a lot of investors want to see that you've either proven out the model or you've got some metrics that show that this product works. So, so today, for, I, I had a, a website that I that I own called AsSeenOnTV.com, and it was the it's the website of everything from the as seen on TV industry in one place on the internet, 2,000 products, hundreds of vendors. I had three million customers, and so. What we did before we would launch, now Chubby Checker I did in 1991, but today if I do a product, I can send it out to as many as 3 million customers to find out what they think about it before it's my own focus group, right? So, so this is why my business has become much more sophisticated. The internet has allowed me to do this, and I like to, I, I partner with people that have lists if I need to, but I have my own that can tell me on certain kinds of products. I mean, for example, the Snuggie, when that went out to that list, who would know whether a blanket with arms was gonna be a big hit or not? But people loved it. And so you find things out when you test, and that is one of the magical things that's part of my whole process, as part of my, my steps, is understanding the, the nature of the investment and testing before you invest. So that was step number three. Step number four, very powerful. I started the day talking about mentors, my father. I met a whole group of amazing mentors before I came out in the other room. We all had took pictures and found from Ireland and from Australia and from all around the world. Mentors are unbelievable. And I say you do not launch a business without building a dream team. And the dream team is important because I, I'll give you an example of a business I have right now. It's a beauty business. I, I'm not a beauty expert. I, I do gadgets. I do fitness. I do uh, kitchen products and, and hard goods, juicers and, and Chinese walks and mixers and, and gazelles and all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, so I'm doing a beauty project, and who did I get to join my team? Well, the, the, the gentleman's name was Jim Morrison, who ran L'Oreal Beauty for 10 years. President of L'Oreal, $5 billion in sales, 5,000 employees. He had semi-retired. I brought him out of retirement and brought him in to my dream team. And by the way, I said, you'd think, oh, what did that guy cost? A million? He was making a million a year. No, zero. I gave him a, a, a money was going to come as we raised money, and you're going to get a piece of equity if we build this business. So, so building the dream team, operational people, management people, people with a track record. By the way, how about somebody that has an exit strategy, someone that's had an exit before in a previous business? So you're sitting there raising capital, you need $5 million to raise capital, and on your team is a guy that's had three exits already in, in companies that he's built and sold. Wow, that goes a long way, because now you're focusing on the investor to 
this industry that's ripe for acquisition and is going to be giving a payback on the investment. So, so this is so powerful, so important. I believe that the dream team can be the difference between success and failure. And I'll just give you, I'm not going to say which project it was, but one of my Shark Tank investments, I got all excited about the jockey and I, and I, I gave this person $500,000. And I was like, wow, th th this person is just going to take this and build it. They're going to get into all the stores and all of this. Well, I didn't surround the person with the right kind of management. Shame on me who, who talks about needing mentors and people to do this. There was no finance, uh, uh, proper finance and operational or digital marketing experts on her team. So we, in six months, we ran through a half a million dollars, closed the doors down, and walked from that deal. So, so this is why I'm saying, I, I don't invest in a business unless there's a good dream team. And, and so from your own standpoint, it's great to build it, and it doesn't have to cost you a ton of money because you can bring people in. I mean, like I mentioned, you take somebody that, that they, they have a, a deferred compensation program that their comp starts as you start raising money. So now they're incentivized to help you get the capital in the door also. All right, so this is number four. And again, I could spend a little more time on these, but I know we got, it's been a long couple of days for everybody and, and being Las Vegas, uh, we, I know we got a, a great afternoon uh, still ahead. So let me just get to the last couple steps and we're gonna wrap up here today. So um, the, this one I have a lot of fun with because I say part of becoming a successful entrepreneur and building your business is understanding what your pitch is and how to develop a perfect pitch for your company. Now, this can also apply to your product. You need a great pitch for your product. And I say that you tease, you please, and you seize. And when you tease, you open it, the pitch with some kind of an attention-getting problem. And I'll, I'll, I can go back and talk about 500 infomercials that I've done. Every single one of them starts with something that's a very hardcore attention getter. With Arnold Morris, it was cutting through the Coca-Cola can, get your attention. With uh, Billy May selling cleaning products, it, if he's going to sell OxyClean, what does he do? He's got a meatball sandwich, and within six seconds, he's, it's something spilling all over his shirt. And, it, and so you're getting the attention, an attention-getting problem. Then you please with the benefits and, the, and all of the solutions to those problems, and then you seize by creating an irresistible offer. And so um, I'm going to say that, unfortunately, Shark Tank did not have an, an, enough. Uh, Shark Tank had 45,000 submissions last year, only 165 that actually made it on air because they didn't have a perfect pitch. And raising capital, you need a perfect pitch. Selling your product, you need a perfect pitch. So I, I love to ask this question. I'm going to show you a couple clips. Um, does crying make a good or a bad pitch? Well, let me give you the answer. So this woman came on Shark Tank, and right away as she comes out, she's telling her story, and we're all sitting there, and we have IFBs in our ear. We're listening to the producers, Mark Burnett and Clay Newbill up in the, up, they're upstairs, and, and they're, they're talking to us occasionally. And so as the woman comes out, she starts to talk. She's talking about her family and, and a personal situation, and you could see she was gonna start to cry. And just then, Clay says in, our, in all of our ears, O'Leary, don't say a word, okay? <laughs> okay, because O'Leary was ready to jump down her throat, right? So, because why? He wanted to hear the, the emotion, and that's part of the perfect pitch. This is where it all starts, guys and girls. It's, it's the emotion, your, your feeling of, of, of how powerful this business can be. And so, yes, having the emotion, it's I talk about the steps to a perfect pitch, tease, please, and seize. This one I'm going to assume that you have, and that's that you have the passion for your product or your business. And from what I've seen here the last couple of days, the passion is, is at, at, at a, on a scale of 1 to 10, exceeding a 10 level here from this crowd. So, all right? Okay. Yeah. So, um, 
very, very exciting. So uh, let me just show you, I, I talk about the tease real quick. Here's another one that I did that's just, this was a very crazy product. This guy comes in my office, he sets this machine down on my desk, and he, and he says, watch this. And then this is what I watched. How many have seen the food saver before, right? The vacuum food sealer? So this guy's like, I said, so what, you're selling a, a Coca-Cola can crusher? Okay? <laughs> He's like, no, this, this is amazing because you can, you can buy in bulk. The reason it's called food saver is because you buy in bulk and, and then you get a chance, you buy four pounds of cheese and you break it into four one pounds and you buy it at 60% at, at off because you're buying in bulk. And then you can also put your leftovers in there. But the reason, I said, well, what's the, the Coca-Cola can crush it? This is to show the power of the unit. It's so powerful. This is like a commercial quality vacuum food sealer. You can buy bacon and re-shrink wrap it and cheese, et cetera, et cetera. I call it the billion dollar sound because that's, that's what we actually did. We did a billion dollars with the food saver. And it all started because this guy came to my office and put it on my desk and said, listen and watch this. That's called the tease. And, but then we did a lot of pleasing and then we also had the irresistible offer. So I'm just gonna talk about a couple of quick ones here. This guy in, in some perfect pitches and I'm gonna show you one from Shark Tank that you get a kick out of. Lazo Freeman, he was a, uh, a personal trainer and he says, I, what's your, per your perfect pitch, Lazo? I get a kick from motivating individuals to be the best they can be. And I said, Lazo, that sucks, okay? <laughs> That's not, I mean, what is, anyone can say that. So what we changed it to is, I only do exclusive radical 12-week body transformations with business leaders, celebrities, and public figures who achieve amazing things at work and ordinary things naked, okay? <laughs> okay, so now, by the way, before, he couldn't get new customers. Now he's, he's like a rock star personal trainer because people, they can't get to him. He's got six or eight personal trainers working for him that you have to go to one of them first before you get to him. And he deals with celebrities and rock stars himself. So this is the kind of uh, changing of these pitches that when, you know, because anymore today, I get calls every single week from people, hey, Kevin, I'm going on Shark Tank. Can you give me some advice? And so, I, yes, I have a whole series of things that how to create a perfect pitch, how to get yourself on a Shark Tank. And by the way, it's also how to get on some of the talk shows, and that's going to be one of the last things we talk about. So um, let me just... Real quick, I mentioned Billy Mays. I gotta tell you, here's the very first infomercial Billy ever did, and, and just look here's Billy how, Mays. how bad Thanks this was. Thanks for inviting me. I'd like to introduce to you the Washmatic International. It's the only washing system in the world that works direct from a bucket. Okay, who cares? <laughs> like, that was a major bomb. I'm like, so Arnold Moore says to me, I'm gonna introduce you to Billy Mays. He says, Arnold says, he's the greatest knife salesman himself, but he says, Billy is the greatest salesman in the world. And I'm like, this is Billy Mays? I spent money to do that, right? So, I, you know, but guess what? We don't give up easy. We, we, I said to Billy, you know, I think he'd been out too late the night before. He didn't have, he didn't know what he was doing. And, and this was the first time he ever shot an infomercial. So let me tell you, let me, that was his first. Let me show you his last before Billy passed. And because and, this will show you, see if there's any difference. Here to tell you more are Billy Mays and Anthony Sullivan. Hi, I'm Billy Mays. And I'm Anthony Sullivan. The dual saw is no ordinary saw. It uses counter-rotating technology to cut through all types of material with unmatched safety, speed, and precision. It's a process that took eight years and cost millions of dollars to develop. Until now, this technology has only been available for industrial purposes. Let's give Billy a round of applause for that change. Wow. God bless him. <laughs> Billy passed away a few years ago. He was the greatest pitch man on TV that the TV industry had ever seen. And that show, if you, I don't know if you've seen it, it's called the Dual Salt, two counter-rotating blades, $150 million in sales that product did. So um, yeah, d Billy delivered a perfect punch. So that was a perfect pitch. And I'm gonna show you one 
actually from Shark Tank, but I want to just say, first of all, testimonials are very important, and a lot of folks don't realize there are five different types of testimonials. And I'm giving you guys a lot of content here today because I really want you to try to take away as much as possible. Most people think that, hey, I got a testimonial, it's a user, the consumer of my product. No, there's a professional testimonial, which is a doctor or a lawyer. There's a celebrity testimony, which takes it up even a notch. And how about editorial testimonials? That would be a newspaper, a trade journal. Um, if you're in the houseware industry, I want Homeworld Magazine to be writing about this product. Um, how about the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times? Uh, you know, we go through after all of the kind of press that we can get because it, when we put something on a shopping channel, a QVC, an HSN, we have consumer testimonials, we have doctors, we have celebrities, we have editorial, and then we use clinical testimonials, which are proven studies that clinically prove that the product's claims are accurate. And this is like an FTC type of a thing in many cases. So especially when it comes to beauty or ingestible. So I highly recommend, I mean, it's just something as simple. We did a fishing lure. It was called the flying lure. And I, it was a 30 minute show. Gentleman comes in and, and he says, I, all lures drop, they go straight down. Mine is reverse engineered and rigged to hit the water and swim away like a wounded fish. It's called the flying lure. And I said, what kind of testimonials do you have? He said, oh, I got plenty of users that love this product. And I said, no. I said, we need way, we need, I need to get Bass Pro Champions. I need to get a Field and Stream magazine. I need to get the guys that do the fishing shows, the Roland Martins and all of that, okay? So we, had, we shot 100 plus testimonials, 65 testimonials that made the final cut. The 30 minute show, when you watch it, it's a mind-blowing show. It sold 500 million fishing lures because we used testimonials at all different levels. So here's, I just got to, I, I, I'm really excited about some of the Shark Tank stuff and some of it, like I mentioned, some that didn't work. I got to show you one that did. This is, I'm going to ask later. Hi, is it a perfect? So, so yeah, City Kitty, huh? This product, it's, it's in molded tray. Throw your litter box away so you don't have to pay for litter anymore. Now the cat's not running through the house with dirty litter all over its paws. And you, the molded tray goes on top of the toilet. You put fresh litter there. Now the cat, you show, jump up on the toilet. This is where you go to the bathroom. But each week, a ring comes out until week one, week two, week three. By week four, there's no ring, there's nothing there. The cat is toilet trained to keep jumping on top of the toilet, okay? I said, if it only would work for children, all right? So, uh, so, so now, I, part of what I did with City Kitties, we took this into this big press tour. We took her under, on a Today Show, Good Morning America. I actually went on The View with um, Rebecca, the lady that you just saw. I did the deal, $10 million, in sales later, by the way, Walgreens, let's, Rebecca Riscotti, right? Okay, so here, here we are. I go on the view. I'm talking cat toilet training with Barbara Walters, Whoopi Goldberg, and all of this. So the show's over, and I, the producer knocks on my door, says, Kevin, we loved having you. It was great. Before you leave, Whoopi wants to say goodbye. So I'm like, okay, I hope uh, everything's okay. So, so I go to Whoopi's dressing room on the way out, and she says, Kevin, hey, great to meet you. Loved having you on the show today. I got one bone to pick with you. She said, that City Kitty product, I presented five products that day. She says, that City Kitty, she says, I have a cat named Oliver, and two weeks ago, you sent a product here that we had to put through legal. Well, they told me to take it home. I took it home to Oliver, and I said, Oliver, look, throw the litter box away, put it on top of the toilet, and I took Oliver in. Oliver took one look at City Kitty on top of the toilet, ran in my bedroom, jumped on my bed, shit all over my bed. Okay. <laughs> I, said, oh, I, I know Whoopi likes to kind of pull your leg a little bit, but I, I, I said, that's why they call it shitty kitty, okay? <laughs> so anyway, that was, that was a great story, but by the way, $10 million in sales. So um, we're gonna wrap the last two steps here fast, because the last uh, number six is raising your profile. For me, raising my profile started when I, when I started doing the Entrepreneur Magazine stuff way back, but now recently, Mark Burnett also said, Kevin, I've been reading your book, and I've been seeing you've been doing all these interviews all over the internet. You're doing radio shows. And I started with one radio show, then I was on 10, then I was on 50. By the way, there's 2,000 radio stations in America. 
do you have something that the radio station would like to talk about? Talk, you know, talk radio, right? So I, you know, we, we do, I publish books for entrepreneurs and this is a lady that was a struggling female plumber that we found needed a little punch up in her business. We created the, the, the joy of plumbing for Hattie, okay? So this positioned her as a rock star female plumber and she actually started her own association of female plumbers. So becoming a, rock star in your industry, raising your profile, it starts by developing, I call it an authority media package on yourself, on your business. And this is something now that's got your social media, any newspaper articles, trade journals, radio, podcast. I do all of these things, and these are the things that you need to be doing on a daily basis. Have you raised any money for charity? Get a letter from the charity on how great you are in terms of your ability to, to help them raise capital for their charity. And, and so uh, it, 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 it all starts with a press release and a system, and this is step number six. So, I mean, I even have now, I publish my own magazine. It's, it's a digital magazine. It's called Shark Preneur. And um, if anybody wants a free copy, it's on my website. You can check it out. It's, it's called Sharkpreneur, but it's, it's a monthly digital magazine, and I'm the publisher. I get to interview people. And by the way, just think about this. You, you've got a digital magazine. You're a publisher, and I know there's a financial guy. I, I, we've done now about 150 of these magazines for folks, right? So um, it, a finance guy was trying to get in to, to talk to you know, clients, and he's trying to get to, for them to bring their investments over to him, and he kept getting turned down, and no one was, they weren't get, getting back to him. The secretary wouldn't put him through. Now, all of a sudden, he's the publisher of a digital finance magazine, and now he's right through to the right people to get their return calls and interview them and establishing and opening those relationships. So, so d doing the kinds of things and raising your profile helps you keep your customers, get new customers, build your credibility. You stand out from the competition, enhancing your reputation as an expert. And by the way, it has a very long shelf life. So um, I talk about media. I talk about media opportunities. I've been in the media world. This guy's Rupert Murdoch. And I say, the old days was I had to go to these guys and give them millions of dollars. Old media, a few channels that broadcast to millions. And let me just give you the state of media over the last few years. Radio took 38 years to get to 50 million uh, viewers, uh, listeners rather, TV took 13 years to get the 50 million viewers of the internet four, iPod three, Facebook two, but this guy got to a billion people, Sahai, in six months, right? Uh, and he actually broke Google's, um, it was viewed so many times he bursted through the counter and they had to reset the counter on Google, over two billion views. He broke YouTube's code. So th he did this utilizing new media, millions of channels broadcasting to a few people, much like, has, has anyone heard of Michelle Phan? She's, she does, started with just some makeup tutorials and in her home using her iPhone and she's now an $84 million startup. Um, and you've probably, if you haven't heard of, of Michelle, how about the Dollar Shave Club, right? If you've uh, heard of that one, there's a new one called the Dollar Beard Club. And it's, they sell beard oils and shampoos for the beard. Dollar Shave Club is valued at $600 million. Unbelievable. Michael Dubin, the guy that started the company, spent $4,500 shooting a video, like on his iPhone kind of a video. And, and it, you know, with the whole concept that small is the new big, you got a production studio right here in your pocket, Periscope and Meerkat and Hang With and some of these companies that give you the ability to broadcast out your messaging to people and get followers. And when I talk about video, it's, it's you know, the last line, online video accounts for 50% of all mobile traffic. And there's 89 million people watching 1.2 billion videos a day. This is the future. And I'm gonna tell you that if you're not using video, you gotta start very quickly and there's ways to do it that doesn't have to cost a lot of money. So um, the last step here for the day, and, I, and I'm trying to pack as much in for you as I can in a short window. Um, I love getting together with, with a group as powerful as this group is here. So I'm just gonna say, 
on the, on the last most powerful thing that I think you can do is create amazing, and how about that, partnerships, right? Um, and that's, it all starts right here in, in, a, in a group like this, and I create partnerships. I don't, I don't, I, I am not an inventor. I don't invent the products that I've got, that I've marketed. I license them. I partner. I partner with companies like Guthy Ranker that are my competitors. They do beauty, and I do gadgets, and we partner with projects together. And I'll give you another example of a really cool one I'm doing right now, and it's it's, there's, there's a final thought that I'm going to leave everybody with today, and that's about mobile. Because TV is dropping viewership. It's, it's no secret. All the media companies, there's, it's called the disconnect. Millennials are ditching their TV sets at record rates. So I'm getting into mobile now. I've, I'm launching mobile apps. I'm launching mobile partnerships. And so I, I said to myself, I want to launch a mobile app. And what would be the best way to get distribution? How about partnering with a company that has 50 plus million phones and, and subscribers? Sprint, and that's what I did. I, I launched a company called Starshop, and Starshop is celebrity products, but it's on a mobile app that Sprint puts on 850 million Androids every single month, because by contract, they, they have to pre-install it on every Android now going forward. We'll be, we're on six million phones right now. Uh, we just launched a few months ago. We're gonna be on 20 million phones by next year, but it's called partnering with the people that have the assets. Right? And so that's what you gotta, you gotta think smart. And so I partnered with Home Shopping Network. That's what took me to, down to, um, d down to the um, uh, St. Petersburg area where I now live because they have a lot of products and I got to put my products on HSN, but I also got to take the winning products off of HSN and take them into, into foreign distribution. So, so you know, just again, Talking about mobile and the, and the wave of the future, the U.S. consumers now spend more time in their apps than they do watching TV. And, they, they, and look at the last few years, uh, from 13 to 14 to 15, the, the daily amount of time on mobile apps and TV. If, if that doesn't tell you where the world is going and you need to be here, you know, why is mobile uh, growing by 40% right now because mobile apps boost your brand. They stand out from the competition, increases customer engagement. By the way, an email gets read um, by 20 some percent of the people six hours later on average. Mobile apps and push notifications get read within 10 minutes 94% of the time. So this is how you increase the customer engagement and I don't care what industry you're in, um, 95% are read within 14 minutes, excuse me. So, um, and this, this is how they're being used in restaurants, in schools, in teams, in politics, trade shows, retail, direct sales. It's unbelievable. So, um, the, 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 the mobile future is so powerful and the, the ability to connect with your customer instantly because everybody, I mean, even myself, I am never more than a couple of feet away from this mobile phone, even when I sleep, it's right there by my bedstand. So it's this, this is where you need to communicate with the people. And so now I've partnered with a company that we can turn any website within about three minutes into a mobile app. So, so I, I put this slide in, if you have a website, great, because now you have a mobile app because it just goes through a software and changes it instantly to a mobile app and now you can put it up on, on iTunes and or the Android store. So, so yes, it is, this is the wave of the future, the mobile business. And I just wanna, you know, from, whether it's mobile commerce or what, whatever area of the, this you're in, I mean, Amazon is huge and the sales of HSN and QVC and the people that I do a lot of business with the mobile side is now is is now approaching 40 percent of their sales. So um, so it's, it's it's so powerful, and I just want to say that that please focus on mobile. And so my seven steps. We've had a great time together. Uh, I want to just kind of close up on a on a couple last thoughts because I, I mentioned earlier I've done over 500 infomercials. About 130 of those 
actually made money, which means a bunch of them didn't. And so more failed than succeeded. And so I say success is actually being able, and Sir Winston Churchill is the one that came up with this quote, but success is being able to go from failure to failure without the loss of enthusiasm. And so, you know, I don't, it's hard for me to say, you know, that you get encouraged by failure, but I, what I do is I like to fail fast, and then I like to fail cheap, cheap, because the, the cheaper I can fail, the less money I lose, right? So, um, you know, and, and so, I mean, I've talked about in, investors, and you know, one of the funny things is, is over the years, I have tried to do business with banks, and very seldom, I, I, I never forget the very first time I went in and talked to a bank, and I tried to get money, the, the, I, the, the bank, I said, I need a, uh, I need a line of credit. So my, one of my advisors said, go get a line of credit for a million dollars. So I went to the bank, filled out all the forms, and they, they called me back about two days later and said, hey, we've got that line of credit approved for a million dollars. And I'm like, wow, that was, that was amazing. How, that quick? He says, yeah, they're just one issue. What are you going to put up to secure the million dollars? Do you have a CD in the bank, or do you have real estate, or do you have cash to secure that line of credit, okay? And so I'm like, oh, no, now I get it. No, they're not giving me a dime of credit. There's, you know, it's, the banks are impossible to deal with. And as entrepreneurs, forget about it. That with the big meltdown with real estate, they're, they're even tougher anymore today to deal with. So, so this is when sometimes... I feel like this, when Tony Little hit bottom, I, I'm like, this is how I, I feel sometimes after you know, a rough couple of months in the, in, in the business. Tony, had, he actually called me and he said, Kevin, he said, I think I'm gonna quit the business. Um, I, I just, you know, I don't have the passion anymore and I'm not excited about it. it you know, it, it, there was all kinds of stuff happening in trying to build the business back then with getting financing and getting investors that Tony wasn't up to school on. And so, make a long story short, I said to, I said to Tony, you know what? This is why you need mentors. And I, you know, Tony's been my mentor and I've been a mentor to Tony. I said, no, Tony, I said, you can't quit now. You've, he had just finished, we just did the, um, uh, the Ab Isolator infomercial about two years prior. And he's like, he's done, he's finished. And look at him, he looks like, you know, like a, a, a burnt out guy, you know? He'd gained weight and he lost his enthusiasm. And we, I said, Tony, let's go down to that fitness show down in Atlanta and check out to see if we can find some new stuff. And if, this is an amazing fact. Of all the things that we've done with Tony, this one, after he had decided he was quitting, became his most successful. Working my buttocks, <laughs> if I lean forward, I'm uh -huh. working my chest, I'm working my triceps, I'm working the back of my calves, and I'm working my heart, and I'm working my lungs. So, so that's, that, that was a billion dollar product, and this is why I say that whenever I get down in the dumps, and, it, and I'm gonna offer this to, to, to everybody here today, that if there's a way we can connect with you, I call, I get, I get down, when I have a couple, if I have two, three, four, five failures in a row, yeah, I say, don't lose your enthusiasm, but sometimes it's tough. So I'll call Tony Little up, and I'll say, hey, Tony, I've got this new thing. I've got, I need some help. What do you think about this one? And this is generally what Tony says to me. You can do it. <laughs> okay. Hey, Tony Little, you can do it, buddy. Yeah. So th that's... Th that's his motto, and that's, that's the, the, between that and the last book I'm going to tell you to read is my closing thought. Certainly, you guys are here because you believe you can do it. You've got the passion, and, and I hope the seven steps that I've created are helpful for you to help take your business to the next step. Um, but I just, there's one last book you got to go buy because this one, uh, is much like my father had some early ones for me in the early days, I said, this, this is one... Please go find it right away. Here we go. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and bank loan officers are from Uranus, okay? All right? So that, that, that's, that's my closing thought, guys. Thank you for having me today. It's been a lot of fun being here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Awesome. All right, buddy. Thank you. All right. Thanks, man. Great job, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.